Obviously, this was earlier this week. 1,420 people took part in this annual survey. 4.9% expressed strong confidence that the Padres are moving in the right direction. Very confident. Somewhat confident was 25.3%. 38.5% was unsure. 22.3%, not very confident. And then 9% were not confident at all. So nearly 70% of the fan base that voted here, over 1,000 fans, were either unsure, not conf- not very confident, not confident at all. And then the rest were somewhat confident, very confident. I-, I definitely understand those that were in the unsure category, for sure. Because we haven't heard Eric could send a talk, and there hasn't been a season, and we don't know A.J. Preller's future, for sure, beyond this year. And how Mike Schilt's going to do as the manager of the team, and how these other guys that were acquired in the Soto deal, how are they going to do? So. Unsure, I, I, I definitely understand that. Those that aren't confident, I understand that as well because you, you're seeing the payroll go down. You're seeing Hayter and, Sa- uh, and Soto go. Martinez and Waka and Lugo and Snell. All these guys depart. Guys, some guys that are here long-term coming off of down years. Who is Eric Kutsenda? We only see one headshot of him on the internet. Haven't heard him talk. Bob Melvin went to the Giants. Now we have another new manager. How long is Preller going to go? What are these prospects going to do when they're up? So, yeah, I think it's pretty easy for fans to be, yeah, not too confident, either unsure or not very confident. And then the somewhat confident, it's kind of like me. I'm trying to stay optimistic. I know there's talent on this team. I like what we're hearing about the prospects that are coming up. I like the the Mike Schilt hire. So just kind of hoping for the best there. How does that compare to how you felt this time last year? The majority, I'm a lot less confident, 42.8%. I'm a little less confident, 42.2%. I feel about the same as 10.3. 3.4, I'm a little more confident. 1.3, I'm a lot more confident now. I'm a lot less confident. That I, I definitely understand that, especially like when you don't have a center fielder, a left fielder, DH first base option, rest of the rotation filled out. Eric could send a taking over. Haven't heard from him. It's like, like, like I just talked about. It's, it's easy to be not optimistic about this team and be a lot less confident. A little less confident. Understand that as well. I don't understand those that say that they're a lot more confident now. How can you be a lot more confident? I know that's 1.3%. Maybe they're just doing that to... Maybe it's Dodger fans that are voting in it. Just to troll. I don't know. I don't know how you can feel a lot more confident in this team in the direction than how you felt at this time last year. I just don't understand that. With what has happened, how confident are you in ownership led on an interim basis by Eric Kutsenda? The majority was unsure, 45.7. And I think that's what it should be at because we have... I don't think you should say very confident. I don't think you should say not confident at all because we haven't heard him talk. We haven't had a full off season of Eric Kutsenda leading things. And we don't know if he's going to be the full chairman long term. Is this just interim? So I think unsure is probably the right thing to go there. How confident are you in AJ Preller? The majority was unsure, 27.5. Not very confident is right after that at 26.7%. Not confident at all, 21.4. Somewhat confident, 19.1. And very confident, 5.3. And that's understandable. People being unsure, not very confident. I think some are unsure because they've seen some good moves. They've seen some bad moves. Don't know what his future's like. Don't know. They're unsure what the rest of this offseason is going to look like as well in terms of who exactly are the Padres bringing in and the holes that are on the roster. And then If you're not very confident, I think, you know, it's because, you know, Bob Melvin, that relationship didn't work. Is this going to work with Mike Schilt? Had to trade Juan Soto, Hayter, Snell, all these guys departing. All that talent wasn't able to make the postseason. You're seeing articles out or that that main athletic article out about A.J. Preller and how he operates and just the, the dysfunction that there's been in the Padres organization. So, yep. Definitely understand the not very confident crowd there for sure. 
How would you rate the hiring of Mike Schilt as a manager? 22.2% was, was in my boat, said excellent. 39.5 said very good. 29.2 said good. Uh, 6 9 said fair. And then 2.2 said poor. Yeah, I think some are probably the majority, 39.5, are reluctant to say excellent because of how every other manager has worked out under AJ Preller or hasn't worked out, I should say, under AJ Preller. But I think most say very good because of there's the relationship before. He's been in the organization. There's been a lot good said about Mike Schilt. Um, he had some success managing with the St. Louis Cardinals. So very good. I think that's a good vote to have there for sure. What is the team's biggest weakness? The majority says outfield. And that's for sure. I mean, I, I shouldn't say majority. The highest vote. I, I probably shouldn't say majority on all these. I'll probably continue to say majority. But the highest percent of the vote, 46.5%. Majority is over 50%, but 46.5% said outfield, 36.6% said rotation. If you say anything else, I don't really understand why you say that. Because rotation, or excuse me, bullpen, it's good. I don't think they need another addition there for now. First base DH, they can make a small addition there. You could have Jake play first base if you need him to. I don't know why anyone else would say other. Outfield, I mean, you don't have a center fielder. You don't have a left fielder. Rotation, you can still, you know, throw together a rotation if you need to. Outfield, you don't have an outfield. So I think outfield is definitely the right pick there. How would you rate the December trade of Juan Soto and Trent Grisham? 16.2% said I loved it. I mean, I understand you saying that under the circumstances. 39.6% said I liked it, and I think that's also considering the circumstances. I don't think anyone liked dealing Juan Soto and Trent Grisham. Like Soto's, maybe some people did. They didn't like Soto for some reason. But considering the circumstances, I like the return that the Padres got back. So, yeah, uh, that's understandable being in that boat of 39.6. Uh, 26.2 are unsure, and that's because like we don't know the result of the trade. Right, you'll be sure when you can look back at it in hindsight. Obviously, um, I didn't like it. Was eleven point five percent, and then six point five. I hated it, and I think that's people that it's like, why are we trading Juan Soto? That's stupid. I hate that. Right? Of course we hate it. You don't want to trade Juan Soto, but that's the circumstances that we're in. How concerned are you about the Padres' payroll cuts this off season? The highest percent was forty-seven point five. Somewhat concerned. And yeah, I think that's the right pick to have there. 29.8% said very concerned. 19.3% said not very concerned. 34 not concerned at all. I don't really understand how you can be not concerned at all when it's you don't have a TV deal, you're trimming the payroll, you have to trade these stars away because of payroll. It has to be a little concerning, right? Uh, but yeah, somewhat concerned. I think those that aren't picking very concerned, it's because like the payroll, it's still high in comparison to a lot of other payrolls in Major League Baseball and in Padres history. I mean, this is a still a high payroll and there's still high paid players on this team. It's not like they're stripping down to the Oakland A's or Colorado Rockies, right? Um, so you're looking at it from, well, there's still talent. Maybe it's a reset CBT. At least that's what I imagine some fans are looking at it as. So not, you're not very concerned. You're being somewhat concerned. And that's that's another understandable one. What should the Padres do with Ha-Sung Kim? 41.4% said negotiate a contract extension before he reaches for agency. I think that's emotional. And yeah, you want Ha-Sung Kim here long term. But if you're being realistic, is that actually the best thing to do? Because you have Bogarts long-term, you have Cronenworth long-term. Now, if you trade, like I said, if you trade Merrill, if you trade Jake Cronenworth, and then it makes more sense, okay. But if you negotiate an extension with Kim, Manny blocked up, Bogarts, Kim, that's your third, short, second. And you're saying that Cronenworth's going to play first base? Like, that's your infield for the next five-plus years? Or are you saying, no... We'll trade Merrill, or we'll put Merrill in the outfield. We'll, we'll extend ha Sun Kim. He, he's at second or short. Bogarts is at second or short. Manny's at third. Bring in a first base bat. 
Crony, maybe you find a way to trade him, but if you don't trade him, he is, do you try him in the outfield or is he, you're just paying him a lot of money to be a utility guy that's not playing every day? That's not something I want to do. So I, I think the 41.4% is that's what I, fans want to see Kim here long-term. They love ha Sung Kim. He's a, a valuable player. But realistically, I don't, I, I don't see how that is very realistic. Um, 31% say see how he performs in a contract year and consider moving him at the trade deadline. Trade him before the season starts is 21.6. And that's like my boat. Trade him if it makes sense. Because I don't see how he's coming back after 2024. And you can get value back to help fill out the rest of the roster. And free agency is just not something that the Padres are participating too much in right now, obviously. So the 21.6%, I think they're like, trade them if the right deal comes. They're being realistic. They understand the situation, kind of like Soto. So there's that. All right. What is your level of confidence in Tatis recapturing his 2021 20, form on offense? 60.2 said very confident, somewhat confident, 34.2. The rest, I don't really. Maybe the case is, well, he had surgery, so he's never going to get back to what he was before surgery. But 60.2, I mean, I think that's us believing in ability, right? We know who Tatis is. And. I think I said somewhat confident, right? I don't think I said, or maybe I said, I think I, I might have said very confident. I think it was Manny that I said somewhat, right? It was, no, Manny, I think I said very confident as well. Um, But yeah, just ability. I mean, we saw what Tatis did in 21 and he was dealing with subluxations. This guy is a freak of an athlete. So giving this guy a full off season, yeah, and a full season of production, I think you could see an MVP season coming from Fernando. Level of confidence in Manny's bounce back from an underwhelming 23 and elbow surgery. I think because of the surgery, elbow surgery, 55.8 was the majority. Said somewhat confident, 32.5. Said very confident. I'm confident in Manny. Um, this guy, 2022 was not that long ago. I know it was before surgery, and that was before he had a down season. But down seasons can happen, and injuries do happen. This guy should have won the MVP in 2022. I stand by that. I will stand by that the rest of my life. If you're going by the most valuable player, I mean, Manny's that guy for me. Um, that was not that long ago. And Manny's still one of the best third basemen in baseball. And I believe in the talent. I think he is pissed off about what happened this past year. And maybe some of that dad strength will come out, right? I, I'm confident that Manny... Is going to bounce back. And I, I'm happy that Padres fans are in the confident boat on that, thankfully, because if they weren't, I would have had a problem with that. What is your level of confidence in Jake Cronenworth bouncing back? Somewhat confident was 44.6%. Not very confident was 376 Those were the two highest there. Those that are not very confident, I think they're seeing the decline offensively every year in Jake's numbers. And they really didn't like what they saw this past year. Somewhat confident, I think they're saying like, and that's the boat that I'm in, somewhat confident. How can you have as down of a year that he had? And Last year, had to go to a different position. He was trying to be someone part of the year, a good chunk of the year that he was not. If he can be, just embrace who he is and be a line drive hitter, then he's going to bounce back. So I think somewhat confident is the right boat to be in there on Jake Grunworth. What position should Xander primarily play in 2024? Shortstop got the majority 51.8. What is best for the team, though? If Kim stays, if Xander stays, if Cronoworth stays, if Manny's here, obviously, is it best? It probably is best. Don't, don't mess with Xander. He wasn't terrible defensively at shortstop. We know Kim can play really well at second. If you don't bring in a first baseman, might as well stick keep Jake at first because he's the one that's more comfortable there and he just played a almost full season at first base so maybe that's what they would what they would do based on the current roster and I agree with that but if the Padres deem that 
the best defensive alignment is, no, let's put Xander at first. Kim's the better defensive player. Let's put him at short. Cronies, we know he's good at second base. He's most valuable there. Let's try it first with Xander. Maybe that's what they do. I don't think that's going to happen, but I'd be fine with either. I'd understand either, to be honest. Which Padres prospect excites you the most? Ethan Salas blew everyone out of the water here. 70.6. That's the one I did, but for 2024, I said Merrill because he's closer to the big leagues, and I think he's going to debut in the big leagues. So Merrill got 15.4. He's the, the second highest there. Snelling, 4.8. Uh, Lesko, 2.8. Thorpe, 2.5. Leo DeVry, 1.9. And then other was two. Maybe someone picked Graham Pauly. They were thinking about Nathan Martarella, Homer Bush. Who else? Lizaraga, Berger, some guys like that. But Salas, overall, I think Salas is the right pick for sure. How would you rate the Padres telecasts that were produced and distributed by MLB beginning last summer? Excellent was 39.9, good 40.4, and I think that's 16.7 was fair. Who said poor? Is that just the old crowd that doesn't think that Don and Mud focuses on the game? I don't know. Because, come on, Don and Mud are the best in the game. I mean, what are we doing here? How would you rate Padres radio broadcasts? Excellent was 53.4. 37, good, 8.6, fair, one, poor. I don't know how you could rate it poor. Is it because Ted Leitner's not doing it anymore and that those are just the Ted Leitner fans? But Ted was the one that chose to step away, right? Excellent, good, I think, is definitely the boat to be in there. How many games do you think the Padres will win in 2024? 42.1 was the biggest. 80 to 85, that's the one that I think is the right one. 85, 90, 36.5%. 90, 95. Okay, some optimistic fans. 9.6% at 90, 95. And then fewer than 80 was 11%. I think that's those that are like, this roster, this outfield can end up being bad. Injuries, what is the pitching depth going to be? So those those are people that I try not to be in. When you have talent on the team like this still, I'm trying to look at this optimistically, especially when the offseason isn't finished. We don't know what this team's going to look like. So you could go one or two ways. You could go the optimistic view, or you could take the negative view. And I don't want to take the negative view. I'm going to go the optimistic view. I went 80 to 85. Maybe I'll go 85, 90, depending on what moves are made the rest of the offseason. But uh, 80, 85, get in, last wild card is probably a, a decent bet there. What is your excitement level for the 2024 Padres? 33.9 was the biggest amount. Somewhat excited. 32.1 said neutral. 21.5 extremely excited. 10.4 not very excited. 2.1 don't care. If you pick don't care, why are you participating in this survey? If you pick neutral, I don't understand that either. How are you neutral about the year? Like, you're either not very excited about it, you're, maybe you're still watching because you're a fan, but you're not very excited about the product. What's the, because, like, what the roster looks like right now, maybe that's the main reason. Um, or you're either excited. You're one of the two, ex either extremely or somewhat excited. I don't know how you're neutral. And if you don't care, why are you participating in the survey? Will the Padres play in a World Series in the next two seasons? 26.9% said yes. 73.1% said no. This, this was probably flipped last year. I don't remember exactly the results. Dennis says last January, more than half of those surveyed predicted 95 or more wins. 88% said they were extremely excited. Roughly as many people envision a World Series appearance before 2025. Yeah, so our... Our thoughts have pretty much flipped. And, I mean, it's it's deserving for our thoughts to flip, if that makes sense, because of everything that has happened within the last year. Um, I like those that said yes. I said no on this, trying to think realistically. But if you said yes, I mean, you're probably thinking, get in. Who knows what's going to happen? We have talent on this team. Dodgers are going to choke. Braves have choked the last couple of years. 
we can beat the Phillies this time around in one of the next two years. We can beat the Mets or another team that's in there. Or you're just thinking optimistically, like, yes, I mean, kind of like when Ray Kroc passed away, 84, they go to the World Series. Are you thinking that that's going to repeat itself? Win it for win one for Pete. Maybe that's what's going to propel him. You like the Mike Schilt higher. I like you thinking optimistically for sure. And I try to think optimistically about a lot of these things. But if you're if you're saying yes or no, I'd probably say no for almost every team in baseball just because of odds, because of how hard it is just to get to the World Series. So it's not ne- it's not as much as me like crapping on the team as me just saying there's good competition in the National League and it felt like the best shot was 2023 and it's just hard to make it to the World Series. A lot of things have to line up. Um, here are some people, some of the fans' opinions. Describe your feelings on the state of the team in its future in a sentence or two. One here says, worried that Peter Seidler's win at any cost mentality will disappear now under new leadership. Okay, that's fair because we haven't heard Kutsenda talk. Like it's one thing to put out a statement and yeah, the vision, we're going to keep that and all that, but actions do speak louder than words. I'm very unsure about this team, mainly because of the loss of Seidler. I think that's how a lot of fans feel. Guarded about the 24 roster, excited about the prospects. Okay. This is an in between year, lost some stars, but help is on the way as young players develop. That's a measured, optimistic take for sure. And I think that's, that, that is pretty spot on. It is an in between year. And that doesn't mean the Padres won't make the playoffs in an in between year. You can still make the playoffs. Like, there's still, there's still a lot of way to go in the offseason because there's not a lot of moves have been made here. The dragon we slayed now has three heads and our shoelaces are tied together. Okay. They are a bit more realistic with payroll but are lacking in transparent, transparency with the fan base. They are the one major pro sports team in the city. Take advantage of it by being honest with the fan base. That's probably a season ticket holder, I would think, that wants that... Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just another fan that wants transparency. Like you haven't heard from Eric Kutsenda. Tell us what the, it's hard to tell exactly what the payroll is going to be. Tell the fan base because things happen during the off season, but tell us, don't expect the payroll to be this. Um, have a fan Q and a with season ticket holders and answer all their questions. You know, do, I think that can go a long way with the Padres fan base. So I do partly agree with that. Yeah. I'm happy with, or excuse me, I'm happy we have this team at all. Lots of people forget the last 40 years. I don't see a fire sale, just pumping the brakes a little. Optimistic view there. That's kind of, is that Eric Gruppner that put that in there? That's kind of what he was saying earlier this off season, right? All the right moves are being made, all things considered. Okay, fair. A.J. Preller needs to be moved to a different role. He's good at building the farm, but his moves related to the big league club have hurt more than help. Well, if you want to move him to a different role, he's probably not going to be in the organization again. Because would he accept a scouting role for someone else to come in and be the boss? I don't know. He could just go get a scouting role with someone else, right? I'm sure there are a lot of teams that would love to have him as a scout because he's good as a scout. It's everything else that you know we can question, right? Preller's had plenty of time to construct this team. Hasn't proven capable. It's time for a change. It was fun while it lasted, but the unnecessary extensions are going to hamstring the team for the next decade if the prospects don't come up and perform, right? The future is bright thanks to a deep farm. Padres just need to sneak into the playoffs each year. They'll have as good a shot as anyone. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, look at the Phillies and D-backs and Rangers and Nationals. It's happened. Cut spending, raise prices, hope for mysticism. Is that how you say that? Positive regression to the mean to carry us tough bumper sticker. That's probably a season ticket holder right there. That is mad about the increase in prices, and there's a lot of people that are on that boat. They will surprise, can't have worse luck than last year. Seems like that, but when you say that, I think the baseball gods will just keep kicking you in the nuts. Even though I do agree, you can't have worse luck than last year, right? Antsy for the young ones to come up, but please extend Ha Sun Kim forever. That's an interesting combination, though. 
I'm very scared for 2024. It's January and the Padres only have one starting outfielder. I still believe in the overall direction and long-term competitiveness of the club. Yeah, it is kind of scary that they are to be scared for 2024. Yeah, that's understandable because you, you're looking at the roster right now. You're looking at what the Dodgers did and other teams in the National League, like the Phillies and the Braves. Teams are there, right? But I, I do want to remind fans the offseason is not over. Let's see what moves Preller and the Padres make the rest of this offseason. And let's see how the team plays in the season. Let's see what prospects get brought up. But yeah, right now, I don't think this person that put this in here to Dennis, I don't think they're the only fan that's scared for 2024, but can still believe in the overall direction, long-term competitiveness, because you see the top prospects, you see guys that are here long-term, that, that are still in their prime, can still perform well. So these are these are a lot of fair points for sure. Way way too much up, way way too much is up in the air this late off this late in the off season. This team is punting on 2024. Season ticket holders deserve a refund because of the bait and switch after the passing of Pete. I don't think it's a bait and switch to be honest. The payroll was going to come down if Peter was alive or not, and I think Soto was going to get traded as as hard as it is as hard as it is. To hear that, I think Soto is going to get traded even if Peter Seidler was here. Because if you wanted to have more flexibility and build more of a complete roster, that felt like the easiest way to go about it. Now, maybe if Peter was here, he'd make a run at Soto in the in free agency next offseason, and I don't see the Padres doing that. But no, I, I think that payroll was going to go down regardless. Like That was the plan Stuff was being written about that, right? That it was going to go down even if Peter was still there. Like it had to. They were the Padres were presenting a plan to Major League Baseball to get their CBT number down to get back in compliance. Another fan says here, I think this team did an absolutely awful job building a sustainable roster, navigating luxury tax issues the last few years. It's infuriating that we have a cadre, I don't know that word, of elite talent that necessarily has to be balanced with budget pieces that normally would be plugging holes on basement dwelling teams. Yes, but who are those guys that are going to be coming in? It's, it's just, again, it's the question of this offseason is not over yet. I'm not saying that they're going to bring in Cody Bellinger. Like, don't get me wrong. They're probably going to bring in Eddie Rosario, someone that probably would be a bench player on the Braves, or you know, or David Peralta. Dodgers didn't play every day with the Dodgers, right? But I think plugging holes on basement dwelling teams—that's more like Austin Hedges. They're not at that level, right? Um, the part about absolutely did an absolutely awful job building a sustainable roster. Didn't we know that though? Kind of like going in, like we don't have the, the guys ready to come up right now. This better work out because this isn't, we're not going to be spending like $250 million on the payroll every year. And Hader is not going to be here long-term. Snell's got to, not going to be here long-term. Soto may or may not be here long-term. Didn't we know that going in? So, Maybe they did an awful job at building a sustainable I don't know. It's awful. There's guys that they locked up here long-term that can help this roster long-term. What happened last year, though, with missing the playoffs, missing the TV deal, having to take out a loan? I think they mistimed it a little bit. If, if this was happening this next season and the prospects would come up in 25, I don't think it would be as bad. But because there's this like gap year, in 2024 here where it's a transition right that's where the problem is all right i'm not going to read the rest of these i've read a bunch of them already but that is dennis lynn's padres fan survey results thank you to dennis for putting this out i love hearing feedback from fans and i think those were a lot of good questions